All right, next we're gonna talk about overpaint texture and we can go ahead and use uh, this one, but let's go ahead and kind of set it up uh, how we were doing earlier. So I'm gonna go back through here and we're gonna say, uh, the material shading is fine. The saturation I'm gonna turn off so we can see some color. The flat shading is fine. We're gonna go ahead and turn off that outline edge. Displace is fine. And then overpaint color, uh, we're gonna switch that out. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn off these contrasts as well in the screen tone dots. So now when I do a render, uh, unfortunately because this is a object that is split up into separate parts. So I go through here and I can all click and I can see that one thing to just fix this really quick. I'm going to do a merge visible. We're going to go up here to this merge version. I'm going to do a quick deformation. I'm sorry, geometry, modify topology. We're going to do a mirror, mirror and weld across the X. You can hold down control shift and alt and get rid of that piece there and then do a geomet geometry modified topology and we'll do a quick delete hidden. So now I've got this one here so we can go ahead and hit BPR and this is the effect that we're getting. So now to go back here, uh, if we turn on overpaint color, here's the overpaint color that we're doing. If we want to, we can uh, hit reset filter and instead of overpaint color, and if you remember, overpaint color, if we make these dots really big, it's taking the average value of this chunk and filling it in that square. If we do overpaint texture, what it's going to do, and we go ahead and crank this up so you can see it, it's taking the actual image behind it and filling in that square. Now you're going to say these you're going to see these squares a little bit darker. That's because just like an overpaint color, we have an adjust intensity set to point negative point 0.2. So we can make these things lighter than they normally are, make them darker than we normally are. In this case, I'm going to make them a little bit lighter than they normally are. Now also we can do uh, adjust hue. So you can see uh, it's adjusting that hue uh, based on the underlying color. I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone for now. So we're going to make these a little bit lighter than they normally would be. And again, just to get that scratchy painterly look using uh, overpaint texture this time, what we're going to do is go into modifiers here. We're going to crank up that width and then crank down that height, make them long and skinny, and then change that base orientation so it's cutting through our object. Now, this is pretty intense. If we want to just put it onto our background, again, we can take this mask and we can relegate it just to our background here. It's still quite a bit. If we Even if we take this overpaint texture, uh, you see it's very regular. So we're going to go into modifiers here. We're going to change that orientations variation. We're going to crank that up just to give us a little bit of... Uh, variation in those strokes. Now you can drop the opacity and that'll uh, lower uh, kind of the effect it has. You can also remember you can change that blend mode. So if you want you can go say blend mode lighten and then instead of uh, re relegating it to our background I'm going to move it more to the uh, object here and we can blur that mask a bit so the background gets invited in just a little bit. And Now you can see it looks like markers uh, were used to kind of create this. All right, so just a couple more I want to talk about here. Uh, so we just did the overpaint texture. Let's throw another overpaint texture on here. We'll do it a little bit different. So I'm going to turn this one on. We're going to change from overpaint color to overpaint texture. And let's go ahead and hit reset filter. Then one more time, let's crank that up. You're going to see by default, it's going to take a chunk of your own image and split it up. If you go over here to the base modifiers, you can see we can also use complete UV. So it's going to take in the, your uh, entire rendered image and set it into that texture or into each little individual square. And you can also load in your own texture. So if you don't want to use what you're rendering, you can go in here to texture and you can say load up this texture here. Uh, if you go into modifiers here, you're going to see we can have texture transparency. So wherever the image is black, we can go ahead and make that look transparent. And you can over crank these widths and heights. So you can kind of overlap them. You can change the orientation. You can randomize that orientation. You can make this smaller. You can say, you know, just mask it to the background or mask it to the foreground. Change your blend mode. We'll set that to overlay. And we'll go ahead and set that mask to be mostly background. So you can see uh, very quickly you can bring in another, you can bring in your own texture, go through all the same modifiers we've been playing with. Uh, another one you can bring in is like uh, this eyeball here, since it's already cut out. If you have one, uh, if you go into the star here, just remember under the modifier here that texture transparency. If you have that off, it's going to be a black outline, but you know, as you drag that up, anything that is uh, black will turn transparent. Uh, on this one, Let's go ahead and change that blend mode from overlay back to replace. If you go back into modifiers here, you're going to see as we crank that texture transparency up, it's getting rid of the black parts when, in fact, I want the white parts to be uh, transparent. If you go over here to overpaint texture and say, instead of 54, you say negative 54, that's going to invert it. And now when you go to modifiers, you can use texture transparency to just cut out uh, that ZBrush logo, for example. And then, of course, we can go ahead and drop down the overall size uh, and get that sort of effect.